Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. So now we're going to continue uh, with the second part of lecture one. Um, I had a little mess up here uh, technologically, and so I thought I recorded it, but I didn't. And so I have already notes pre-written. So anyway, the topic right now is now we're beginning uh, the discussion in earnest, having defined those terms. The topic is uh, principle of relativity. That's a very important idea. Okay, so this is the content of mini lecture two. Principle of relativity says that all laws of physics that uh, it says that a law of physics cannot be referenced to any one particular inertial reference frame. You can never have a law of physics that mentions San Luis Obispo because it's a particular place with a particular uh, reference frame attached to it. All laws of physics should take the same form in all inertial reference frames. Now, what do I mean by the same form? Okay, so the word form uh, might be maybe uh, confusing to you. Let's say in one inertial reference frame, I find that force is proportional to acceleration, then it must be true that force is proportional to acceleration in any other inertial reference frame. On the other hand, not having the same form would mean that form, that force would be proportional not to acceleration, but to acceleration squared. Remember, we discussed that laws uh, of nature, they are relationships between quantities, force and acceleration. And so the form of the relationship must be preserved as you go from one frame to another. That's what I mean by the term form. Now, let's say Alice and Bob are in two different labs. Okay, so here I have Alice's uh, spaceship with a lab inside. Um, and Bob, okay, so they're in two different labs each in its own inertial reference frame as they move relative to each other. So this is moving with some velocity uh, v1 relative to the earth and this is moving with v2 relative to the earth. They're moving relative to each other. Each person is doing some experiment to test some law of nature. So for example, let's say they're doing intraphysics kind of an experiment with frictionless tracks and they're colliding two carts on frictionless tracks. Okay, the parts come and then they recoil. Let's say um, when they, and, and so both Alice and Bob do that. When they get together and compare notes, they will have found the same law, same relationship between quantities. For example, Alice says, hmm, very interesting. I found a pattern. I found that if you take M and V, for each particle, you multiply m times v, and you sum over all particles, that quantity, the sum of mv's over all particles, it just magically stays constant. It's not changing. The velocities are changing, but the sum of mv's over all particles is just not changing. It's just constant before collision and after collision, and any other, between any other two moments in time, it's just boom, constant. Not obvious at all, but I found this interesting pattern. Bob says, hey, I found exactly the same pattern. I also found that the sum of m times v over all particles stays unchanging in time. Now, we know, of course, that they're referring to law of momentum conservation. So both are finding what we call uh, that the total momentum is conserved. Again, don't confuse invariance with conservation. In this particular example that I chose, the law about conservation of momentum is invariant, and we're fine, right? But uh, some other law, like F equals ma, is not a, about conservation per se, but yet it also has to be invariant from one frame to another if it's a prop, proper law of nature. Now, principle of relativity implies that you can't tell how fast you're moving except in relation to or relative to other objects, okay? Or, um, in other words, you can't tell how fast you're moving unless you look outside. So 
P O R implies that can tell how fast you're moving unless I'm writing like a three-year-old now unless you look outside okay why well to tell how fast you move you're moving in an isolated lab with no windows you would have to do it by observing some physical effect you would have to do some kind of an experiment inside the lab okay and that means that the outcome of some experiment in one isolated lab has to be different than the outcome of the same kind of experiment let's say with the same initial conditions in another isolated lab that's co-moving relative to it but if the experiment is the same and the initial conditions are the same then the only way to get a different outcome if the laws that govern that experiment are different but we just discussed that the laws of nature have to be the same in different inertial reference frames and different spaceships for moving relative to each other so to find a different outcome of the same kind of experiment let's say with the same initial conditions that violates principle of relativity therefore motion has to be a relative quantity okay there is no absolute motion or absolute rest if you're in a perfectly smooth train you can't tell how fast you're moving unless you look outside when you do look outside and see another train moving you cannot say that our train is moving and they're not neither can you can you declare that their train is moving and ours is not all you can say is that we're moving relative to each other now i presented that as a consequence of principle of relativity but i believe you can think of that as an equally powerful statement of uh, principle of relativity yet i like the statement that says all laws of physics are the same in different inertial reference frames and then this follows uh, por also means that when some physical phenomenon is observed from two different reference frames the law uh, that governs that phenomenon will take again the same form so let's say alice and bob are in different uh, inertial frames alice is riding in a car bob is riding in a train with some other speed relative, relative to the ground and both observe some physical phenomenon let's say some distant explosion they observe that distant explosion they track the velocities of all the particles that fly out and they come up with a law that governs it for example momentum conservation or energy conservation or something else they must come up uh, with the same law okay the form of the law will be the same now there are many other restatements of principle of relativity but they all they all come down to the absence of any preferred reference frame in laws of physics all reference frames are on equal footing when it comes to laws of nature and if there is a law of physics it takes the same form in different frames now you might say well i i get it this is this is obvious okay intuitively you all know that and indeed this idea this intuitive idea is very old it dates back to at least uh, 380 years back and possibly more galileo galilei in his book uh, called dialogue concerning the two uh, chief world systems uh, describes the following uh, describes a thought experiment uh, i'm not going to read it to you verbatim uh, there's a good translation i'm going to place it on polylearn it's part of this lecture i just don't want to read it out loud it's boring for you to to hear it and also uh, it's better if you just read it but it's part of the lecture now again i don't expect you to memorize it it's part of building understanding of the material that's what i expect so i would like you to read it and i want to conclude this second mini lecture or second part of lecture one with the following question is it obvious that principle of principle of relativity has to be true by some rules of logic can i somehow derive it by some rules of logic okay think about it 